So congratulations, you made it through this course. Give yourself a pat on the back. That's kind of a big accomplishment. This is not easy stuff. And hopefully you've come through this having learned some very valuable new skills. You now know how to do big data using the latest and greatest technology too through Apache Spark. So these are highly desirable and highly marketable skills and will let you process streams of data and big data sets that you couldn't do otherwise. So it's very powerful stuff. Now, if you do want to learn more, there's obviously stuff that I didn't cover in this course. So if you want to go into more depth, there are ways to do that. Here are some books that I found useful in learning this stuff myself, and I don't get any money or kickbacks from this or anything. They're just books that I found useful. One is the O'Reilly book called Learning Spark. And I, I'm generally a fan of O'Reilly books in general. Most of them are pretty darn good. And this is actually a really good one covering all the basics. So if you do want to reinforce what's in this course with a book, want to have something in writing, this is a good source to have. It's also written by the guys from Databricks, and those are the same people that run the certification program for Spark. So if getting certification is important to you, then you'll definitely want to review this book because this is what's on the exam. Certification, kind of a polarizing topic. As an employer, I never really put any faith or, or importance to certifications myself, but I do know some industries are different and some countries are different. So if getting certified is important to you, you will definitely want to pick up Learning Spark. If you want to learn more about Scala and the Scala programming language, we only really touched on some of what that language can do. There's a lot of advanced stuff, especially when you get into object-oriented Scala that we didn't really get into. But again, from O'Reilly, learning Scala, really good introduction to the Scala programming language. It's how I learned it and pretty easy to get through. I just sat down and read this puppy cover to cover and came away with it being able to actually write some Scala code. So that's, that's saying a lot. And if you want to learn more about applying machine learning using Spark, if you're going in that direction, this is a really good book, Advanced Analytics with Spark. Recommend that one highly. And it goes into actually implementing more complex machine learning algorithms using Spark and MLlib. So we only touched on a couple of examples of that in the course. There's a lot more to explore. And this book goes into that as well. Beyond books, obviously there's the Spark website. So you can go to spark.apache.org and they have all sorts of resources there for you to look at, including the latest news on the latest releases. And Spark is still a young technology, so it's still evolving quickly. You want to stay on top of the latest developments. And there are also community links there. You can sign up for mailing lists and forums and see what other people are doing with Spark and learning from the problems and solutions that they're discovering. So there you have it. A lot of people ask me about career advice. Is taking this course enough to actually get a job in big data? Well, probably not. You know, this is the, the first step, I would say. What you really need, though, is to get some experience in actually applying these tools and techniques. So I'd encourage you, if you aren't in a position to do so at your job today, do some freelance work on the side. Find some people who are looking for, uh, for work on Elance or something like that. And do a few small jobs for other people that you can put in your resume and actually get some practice in applying Spark to real-world situations. Another good strategy is to position yourself so that you can transfer into a big data job within the same company. So one thing that I think is a great idea is making sure that you're working at a company that has the sorts of opportunities that you have. So if you have an existing skill set, say in software engineering, those skills are highly portable. Chances are you could get a job at a company that has big data. And if your ultimate goal is to do Spark processing or other big data processing, getting your foot in the door just as an engineer doing something, anything within that company is a great first step. That gives you a way to connect with the hiring managers that are actually running those parts of the business. And maybe you can talk to that hiring manager about what sort of skills and transfer paths are available to you to actually transfer internally to a role in big data pro processing. That's often a much easier thing to do than trying to get these jobs from the outside where nobody knows you inside the company yet. So a little, uh, couple of career hacks there for you that hopefully are useful. And there you have it. I wish you the best on your journey in Spark and Big Data. In the next lecture, I'll talk about some more resources that I offer for continuing your journey on learning about Spark.